Hey folks, um, none of you have to do this, but I wanted to give you an option to see what the program R can provide you uh, in terms of resources for um, potentially taking your statistical analysis to the next level. Um, R is a really common program uh, that we use um, at kind of like graduate level uh, research and also all over uh, the world. I mean, my parents use it as consultants in the energy the alternative energies field and people use it for all sorts of statistical uh, analysis and figure making. Um, it's nice that it's open source and freely available, but it's a little complicated to get it on your computer and operating, um, especially with all the different packages. Um, so you can bring in, it's not like Excel where you download the program and you have everything at once. You have to kind of download pieces and make it work. Um, Cause it's, there's a million different options. So they don't include everything in, in one, big package. Um, so to do that, um, if you want to explore R a bit, um, I have two t t tutorials um, up on iLearn here under resources. Um, you have your um, computer day one, computer day two. You click on those and download them. Day one goes through how to download R. Um, so R is both a computer language, so like a way that you interface with the computer with lines of code. And then there's a program R Studio, which makes it a lot easier for you to actually interface with that code. So you need to download both. Um, and uh, you can open the R language all by itself, but that's not what you want to be interfacing with. You want to be interfacing with the language via the R Studio kind of like window into R. Um, and so our studio, you know, looks like this. Um, this is what it should look like once you have it all set up. Um, but to get there, you click on these links. They'll first take you to downloading R, um, the base language. You need to download it from an open source option that's nearby. Um, so go down to USA. You can, you know, click on the University of Iowa option and then choose what kind of uh, computer system you have if it's Windows or Mac um, download that then you go to that second link um, right there and that's going to take you to downloading our studio which is also open source way to interface with it you know it's knows that I'm on a Mac um, but you could also download it for Windows or different versions of Mac and so on and so forth um, so you install both of those. It's going to take a while to download and install, and that's just for the base level. And then you also eventually install different packages to do things as you want to do different statistical approaches or different ways to graph things out. Um, and um, so once you have those downloaded, um, you can read through the rest of um, these tutorials here on iLearn. Um, kind of goes through the same things I just showed you how to do using Excel and Google Sheets, um, but instead you can do that in uh, R as well. See how you do the third option for doing that. Um, and it's a pretty complicated way to do it, but you can see also, you know, this is a great resource too um, to see all the different types of really advanced graphics that you can make um, using R. Um, so, you know, you can do a lot more, uh, than what you can do with Excel, you know, and ggplot2 is a pretty great resource, um, for just doing all sorts of advanced types of scientific plotting, um, way beyond what you can do, uh, with Excel. So, um, gives you a lot of cool options. And, you can see all different types of charts, you know, animated charts, so on and so forth um, that you can create. And 3D charts, 3D maps, um, so on and so forth. You can keep on exploring this rgraphgallery.com. It's pretty great. Um, but if you follow these tutorials, um, the second one will get you into making these correlation matrix which I think is the most valuable thing that, to show you how R can really go above and beyond what you can do in Excel and Sheets. And, you know, it does all the same things, but it does it 
in an automated way in R, so it's really fast to get a lot of your needed statistics and graphics and figure out maybe what's controlling what in these big, if you have a really big data set that you're trying to do some spatial analysis on. Um, and so these tutorials walk you through the steps and then they also give you the code. Um, and this code is what you would actually then uh, copy and paste uh, into the um, our studio once you have it up and going. So here's that same code, just copied, pasted there. Um, important things to note though, you know, you're gonna need to follow the steps to install certain packages um, into R. You're gonna do these in the council, um, bottom left. So that's being done down here, kind of copying and pasting some of those things um, to install these different additional packages that give you ability to um, do some of these more advanced graphing techniques. Uh, and then once they're loaded up onto your computer and in your R setup, then they're available to use um, for actually making the graphs. Uh, and so they need to open those different libraries of unique code that you've downloaded. Uh, and the, and this, these lines of code are just telling you to do that. Anything that has a hashtag in front of it isn't actually being read by the computer. Um, and then this is gonna make a correlation matrix. So once it's all in there, um, it's important that you change this section and I should tell that in the tutorial too. So it's reflective of the actual uh, data set that you have on your own computer and where that's located in terms of your file structure on your computer. You know, it's in my Dropbox folder under teaching, so on and so forth. Um, this is what the actual data file uh, looks like. Um, you can see um, this is really important how you format it before it goes into R is really important. So I don't have any spaces in here. Um, I have only numeric values after the first row uh, in every column. And this is just an example of some data that I had from some of my postdoc work looking at depth of soil uh, and uh, available water content and the percent clay and the conductivity of that soil, a lot and the percent porosity. Doesn't really matter what these data is, I'm just showing you that this is how you want it formatted and this is really important and it's just one sheet um, and you're saving it as an Excel file that you then are telling R to essentially open these libraries so you have all these tools available, then import that data set and then create a correlation matrix using this criteria. And you can change the most criteria too, but mostly it's gonna stay the same um, because once you, I mean, if you click source on save, then it'll actually run the code every time you save it. Um, and boom, it pops out a correlation matrix. Um, and what this correlation matrix is, is pretty awesome. You have all of your units on the ends here. You have your, values for, uh, you have your headers for each row. You can go in later and change these if you want to add units and things. Um, but it gives you a graph of say, soil depth and clay percent, and it gives you a scatter plot. So it gives you a ton of scatter plots comparing every variable to every variable, and it gives you the R value and the P value for those essentially like, oh, the porosity, in the soil is related to the clay percent um, with a p-value of less than 0.1, r-value of 0.78. That's pretty strong. If you go and look at the corresponding graph, yeah, that makes sense. They kind of go up together there. And you can look at each single variable in relation to each one, see the graph, and then go the corresponding direction and see the p-value and the r-value. So this is a really amazing thing because then you can quickly look to see which things are related to each other beside uh, instead of making a million graphs in Excel or sheets to do the same thing. Um, so this is one of the big values of this. Um, and I wanted to show it to you. Um, and you can also make a variety of other things, um, you know, make some 
own box, box and whisker plots, um, all sorts of other types of plots that I really encourage you to look up, you know, all these different chart types and see, you know, could I do something where I'm looking at mapping things out or I'm trying to look at how um, scatter plots can be made into a little bit more advanced format from your basic all the way up to having labels and having multiple sets of data and error bars and advanced forms of subplots and everything else um, that you're able to do uh, in this format. So this is our, just wanted to show it to you and let you know um, that this is something that if you're interested in pursuing these kind of things further beyond this class, especially at the graduate level, I really encourage you to give it a try and see if you can take it somewhere um, and let me know how I can help out. Cool, um, great, go science.